I got this problem with my steering wheel and my 4Runner where the wheel is starting to bind up when I turn. It's not smooth and it kind of comes and goes. So I'll be driving around and it'll feel normal some days, especially when it's warmer. Then other days it feels really notchy. Sometimes it feels like my power steering is going out. Either the power steering pump is bad or maybe the fluid's low and everything looks good. And I'll tell you how to fix this in most forerunners. Hey, if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know I don't like wasting time. This is a quick intro. I have a longer outro where I talk about this whole project. The problem with the steering was this steering column shaft. The U-joint went bad on it. This is the part I'll be changing in this video. I've been doing a little bit of drifting. That video was taken in Tijuana. I drove down there with the 4Runner. Who knew they got that much snow in Mexico? After three tanks of gas through the 4Runner drifting, that steering column shaft became pretty bad. The U-joint was sticking and binding and I was lubricating it with T9 lubricant. And the duration between when I had to lubricate it started shortening and that's why I decided to change the U-joint out. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please consider subscribing. Enjoy the video. You can hold this problem off for a while by just getting it up under here with some lubricant and spraying this U-joint down for a while. I've been doing that for a couple months now. This job does not require a lift, but it makes it a little bit easier. Remove the front left wheel. Pop two or three of these clips off and get this rubber rain guard out of the way. All right, did I buy the OEM Toyota part? No. I bought the cheapest one I could find that looked like the OEM Toyota part. I read on a Toyota forum that this job takes an hour and a half. Every time I read that kind of stuff, you just gotta multiply it by three. That's probably what it's gonna take you. So, four and a half hours, we'll see. I think everybody has broken watches. You'll have to turn your steering wheel to get the bolts visible on the collar of the steering column shaft. All right, or uh, actually, you know what? Go left a little farther. Keep going, stop, right there. I think, yeah, that'll be good. The first step is to free these two top bolts on the collar. This lower bolt is a 13 FYI, and the top two are 12s. All right, do it. In order to get to the bottom bolt, you'll have to turn the steering wheel again. To get that off, I used a 12 millimeter and then a swivel, a 3 8 swivel, and then a short extension, and then a reducer from a half to a 3 8 and then a 12 inch extension here, and then the Milwaukee Impact. I threw a bungee cord on the steering wheel. The steering wheel tends to stay straight now, whereas before it would kind of just drift all over the place. Now you can take these two top bolts out. Hit the collar with PB Blaster. Dang, look at those aftermarket headers. Never seen those before on a 4Runner. I'm not sure how you do this without an air hammer. An air hammer is one of those tools you never need until you do. This is mine, a Husky from Home Depot. 
and it comes with this chisel type bit on it and naturally the one that is the best bit doesn't come with the husky and it's not sold at home depot that's this hammer style i ordered this off amazon so close hell yeah i used the air hammer again on the lower spline right on the u-joint I use the blowtorch, but be careful because right to the left of that is a rubber bushing. Back to the air hammer. Here it is. It's hard to see here, but this U-joint is basically frozen in one direction. It's very difficult to move. It was probably exacerbated by me beating on it for 30 minutes, but it was bad. This is the lower spline coming out of the steering rack. And see those couple cruddy looking splines that's where the gap was in the collar in case you didn't mark your, your your position of your spline before you started i forgot to mark mine you can figure out where that gap is by just analyzing the splines a comparison between the shaft that i took off and the generic part the generic part looks like it's a little bit shorter Hopefully it's not a problem. We'll find out. I didn't think this was going to work, but this is how I got the top collar off. All right, here's that part. If you guys have seen any of my other videos, I always clean the threads up on everything that I can. There's a reason I don't work on cars for money. Clean these splines off as much as possible. You want the collar to be able to move freely up and down the spline. Clean off your Doug Thurley headers too. The ones you installed after watching my other video. I'm using a brass brush here so there's no chance of damaging the steel. Both the shaft coming out of the firewall, so the one right there, and the shaft that you're going to be installing have this flat spot. When you put the collar back on both shafts, make sure that flat spot goes right where the bolts go. See how I'm sliding that in there right now? And then when you put the bolt through, it locks it at that flat spot. Otherwise, the bolt won't even go in there. I'll be throwing some anti-seize on the splines here. Just like that. I'll just be sliding this in from the top. And the groove on the back that I identified, I'm gonna line this up with it. I'm just wiggling this back and forth with my hand. You'll know that you're far enough down if you can slip a bolt through that bottom collar. There's not a flat spot, but there's a groove that goes all the way around that spline down there for the same purpose, which is locking it with the bolt. So this part, you can just turn the shaft with your hand now, and you need to align this flat part on this shaft, on the spline, with the flat part up here anyways. So that, that turns, now the flat spots align with each other. Here's another shot. See that flat spot? It's also a flat spot on this spline. 
and you want those to align. When you get this collar on right, it should be able to slide up and down very easily. You slide the collar up, then you get that shaft where it needs to go, then you slide the collar down over the shaft. A helpful tip here when you're working on this, if you keep this top bolt in, it prevents this from falling off. See how the collar just stays by itself up here now? It locks it out and prevents it from falling out. So just loosen that top bolt and keep it in there, especially if your forerunner is not super rusty like mine is. The bolts are all back in, but I'm not gonna tighten them down super tight right now. I'm just gonna get them a little snug and I want to make sure my alignment is still good. I took my bungee cords off and then I straightened the wheels. Made sure it looked like it was straight down here. And as you can see, my wheel is way off. I know the top part's not the problem because I have both those flat spots aligned. So that means I just have to move the tooth on that bottom spline, maybe, maybe one tooth. Here what I'm doing is sliding that upper spline farther into the collar and then I'm pulling the shaft off of the lower spline. And then I'm pulling on the rotor, see how it just turned? And when I pull on the rotor, the spline on the bottom rotates. Just like that, I moved it over, I think it was a couple teeth actually. You can slide the spline back into this collar and then just move your rotor and turn the system and get the steering rack to move over a couple teeth and then just slide it right back down. It takes a second. I'm gonna do this a couple times and make sure I have it as straight as I can get it. It might need an alignment anyways after this. And because this part isn't a factory Toyota part, it's not the highest quality, so it might be a little misaligned from the factory. I threw the bungee cord back on, so the steering wheel is straight again. I know it's straight up top. When I come down to the caliper, or the rotor, I can see that it's crooked. So I'm gonna disconnect that top collar, disconnect the top part, and then, rot then take the bottom part off as well and rotate it one tooth over. Get the steering rack where it needs to be so that rotor is straight and then see if I can get it all back together keeping that geometry. Now the rotor is relatively parallel to the car and the steering wheel is straight. The torque spec on all three of these bolts is 26 foot-pounds. I'm gonna clean up my summer wheels and put those back on this thing. It's warming up right now. Super Clean is a company out of Minneapolis and they sent me these products. They asked me to try them out, so I'm gonna try them out. This is their wheel cleaner. You probably know them from their industrial degreasers. They sent me some of their stuff. They asked me to try it out, so I'm gonna try it out with these wheels. I always clean my wheels up a little bit before I put them back on the car in the spring. So I'm gonna test out their new wheel cleaner. I like their products and I use their products anyway, so when they sent me their stuff, I, was, I said, absolutely. I'll definitely try your stuff out. They make great products. It's an American company. Like I said, they're out of Minneapolis. And their products, their products are all really inexpensive and reasonably priced compared to the competition. If their wheel cleaner works well, maybe I'll use this instead of the griots. Solid spray action. Give the Forerunner wheel some love too. Here's how that wheel looks. Looks pretty good. This one too. 
for approximately two seconds of work. I'd say the super clean wheel cleaner is very effective. All right, back to business. Putting the wheels back on. For the wheel lugs, I use 84 foot-pounds. Yeah, it feels perfect. It feels brand new again. One simple part. As you can see, we're not driving into the wall. And the steering wheel is still straight. Looks like we got that figured out. driving right now and I'm going straight and see how the steering wheels it's less than 10 degrees I'm not sure if I can fix this but I want to mark it I'm gonna use that mark to try to fix this after you drive the car around the block you can bring it back in to your shop or wherever lift it up and then mark that shaft right there this is the steering rack down here and this is the lower spline. You want to put a mark there because that's where the wheels are straight, no matter what happens above this. Then you want to disconnect the shaft from the spline right there. Keep it connected at the top so you can't lose a tooth. Then straighten the wheel out up top. Bungee cord it down. Come back down here, slide this back onto the tooth, onto the spline, and then everything should be square. That job's done. It took a little bit longer than I expected. It took me most of the day, but it had never been done anywhere that I could find online and completely shown with all the steps and all the possibilities. I tried as many different things as I could with it. I tried changing out the bolts. I tried you know, taking that collar up and down, uh, took it completely off. I adjusted it and learned a lot about the system. Hopefully you did too through this video. I got to the point where I was adjusting the rack down here and I was changing that spline by one tooth back and forth back and forth and up here at the steering wheel it was moving the wheel a lot more when you're driving and you put input into the steering wheel you have to do a lot of changes to the wheel to get everything down here to move a little bit and that's what it's supposed to be because that's the point of the steering ratio I'm at the limit of what I can adjust here right now because of maybe the quality of the part. And the steering wheel is nearly straight. I think it's off by like five degrees. But to get it at that last five degrees, I'll have to take it to an alignment shop because they'll be able to work with the tie rod ends and really get, get it dialed in straight. But that requires an alignment machine. And the local shop that I work with, I send so much work to them that they'll probably do it for like 50 bucks. Even if you had an OEM Toyota part, you might have to get it aligned as well just to get it perfectly dialed in. After I posted this video, I tried probably about 10 more times to get the steering wheel straight and no matter what tooth I put it on, on that lower spline, it was still out of alignment. I took it to this local shop and the head mechanic told me it's really common to have to realign the vehicle after you change the steering column shaft. For future content, I want to do a video where I completely delete my muffler and make it a straight pipe. And since I'm running the Doug Thorley straight through headers already, it's going to be insane. I've never heard anything like it before. I'm excited just to hear what it sounds like. And I'm also excited to make the movie and hopefully you'll be excited to see it as well. Also, I'm going to do a spring tune up video where I go through my brakes. These calipers have an exposed slider pin. The calipers go bad pretty regularly. I've had to change my calipers a couple times now because of that exposed slider pin, I think. Every spring I, I go through and just overhaul the brakes. It doesn't take that long. I repaint the calipers and make everything look nice. I regrease everything, put it all back together. And then I drop the trailer hitch. Usually once every year or two, I clean it all up, 
and put it all back together just to make sure everything's solid and functional down there and make sure all the hardware is good. And then I also drop the spare wheel every year or two and then put PB Blaster all over that chain and stuff like that because if you ever tried to drop a spare wheel, if you haven't touched it in five, 10 years, especially if you live in a rust belt state like Wisconsin, a lot of times it'll fail, the chain will break, or you just can't get the thing off and it strips out. It's the worst thing that can possibly happen when you have a flat tire. So I put those videos up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.